Welcome to another episode of Vet Talk. This is your boy, Brother Vince, man. Before we get into the topic, man, I need y'all to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. I want to see some comments down at the comment section. Man, just give me feedback, man, because at the end of the day, man, I may not value all of your comments, but at the same time, your word, I guess, is important. If you feel like it's important enough to leave it, leave it. I'm cool with that. Understandable. Thank you. So now that we're about to get into the subject today, man, I want to bring up this whole racial thing that I saw, man. Um, Man, as a black man, as a veteran of the military, man, I think some of the hardest, toughest, I would say, man, times of my life is after the military, man. And I say that because I go in and I serve my country, get out, and then next thing you know, I look up and you see all these racial issues and things that are happening in our society. Some may be true. A lot of them are lies. Whatever the case may be, man, it's just crazy, man. It's just a crazy time that we live in it. And I want to put a PSA out there, PSA out there, white people, you don't owe me anything. If anything, I thank a lot of y'all for what you do. There are some bad apples out there, which is in the black community. There are some people out there who do some extreme things, which is in the black community. So at the end of the day, man, I understand how the majority feels when it comes to that 1% of brothers and sisters who out there doing the foolishness, man. Sometimes it's just so hard to look past it because you like, man, come on. Like, what is going on? But the thing I'll tell you that helps me out with that is because I'm a Christian, I don't I don't think that way when I see black people doing dumb stuff. I really don't. I really don't think that way when I see white folks doing dumb stuff, Asian or anybody else. Because at the end of the day, man, I'm a Christian. Now, when I see Christians do dumb stuff, yeah, sometimes it hurts. Sometimes it's like, man, come on, man. Like, you're making believers look bad out there. But because I'm a Christian, man, I don't think color, even though I see it. Yeah, I see it. Because naturally, I was born a black man. And there's nothing in the world I would want to do to change that because this is the way God wanted me to be. But I don't feel like white folks are the reason why I didn't have certain advantages in my life. If anything, I want to tell a little story about how white people kind of you know, save my life. When I was a young kid, man, I made a lot of tragic decisions in my life. Um, or bad decisions in my life, should I say. And because of some of those judges and people out there that my father knew, I got off on a lot of things that I should have did buku time for. When I say buku time, I should have did a lot of time behind some of the things I did in my life. But because of the favor that I had with these white people, I got off on a lot of things. Now, I know that favor had nothing to do with me personally, but because of my father, his reputation and things that, you know, he did in our community, they showed me love. Little story of how I went into the military. One day I was driving my cousin's car. The car had drugs in it, tinted windows, Jetta. Riding in the black neighborhood, you know, the typical stereotypical thing. And the cop stopped me. White cop. Now, in this situation, I want you to notate I was wrong. Because one, I was driving with a suspended license, which I knew was suspended, but I pretended that I really didn't know. And played the whole, oh, I just paid for it. I wasn't in the wrong. You know, that the typical story thing that most people do when they know they're in the wrong. They play like they don't really know that they're guilty for something. So they start acting a little bit guilty. So that was, you know, what I was doing. What ended up happening was the officer stopped me, asked me for license registration. I gave it to her. She went to her car, came back. Told me my license was suspended. I do the thing that most liars do and try to pretend and act like, oh, you know, um, I didn't know it was suspended. She asked me if I had anything in the car. 
do the typical thing that liars do, lie and pretend to act like I didn't know anything was in the car. When she went back to her car to call up the other officer, the sister, I took the drugs, hid the drugs in the back seat of the car. A little disclaimer, I had somebody else in my car. Technically, I was supposed to be taking this person to work, but instead of taking her to work like I should have, I had something going on that she had no clue about. So when we got stopped and everything had happened, officer pulled me out the car to search the car. They searched the car, and guess what happened? They find the marijuana. And what did I do? I lied and pretended and act like I didn't know it was there. Told him, hey, man, this ain't even my car. This is my cousin's car. I didn't know it was in there. You know, the typical things that liars do. And I did all that. But what I want you to know is, one of the things my dad taught me, and I learned from having my father around was, when you finally get caught up and you're in trouble, ain't no need to keep lying yourself in the situation because if you keep lying, you have to tell one lie to tell another lie and another lie and another lie. Well, I didn't apply those things in that moment. I kept trying to lie myself out of a situation. But I will say the beatings that I got from my dad, the whippings, as you know, most people want to call them, or the spankings, those things had me in a position where I was afraid to act out during this moment of my lying, you know, being mischievous, had me to a point where I was afraid to lie. So once they discovered the weed, they asked me about it, I said all the lying things I said, instead of saying I'm a woke Negro, instead of acting a fool, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, I just complied because I already knew I was lying. I already knew I was in the wrong, so I didn't want to make matters worse. So I just took it upon myself to do what the officer asked me to do. And that's put my my hands behind my back. I didn't say, wait a minute, let me call on the phone. Because I couldn't call on nobody. Because I knew if I called on my parents, first thing they was going to say is, I didn't have you in jail and I ain't coming to get you out. So I already knew calling home was not an option. I wasn't going to say I was a solving more. Oh, y'all racial profiling me, all these other things. I wasn't going to do none of that. <laughs> because at the end of the day, I was in the wrong. And I think sometimes that's the saddest thing to see is black folks on on these channels and TV news, all this stuff. When I look at the story, I see some of those same people doing the same things I've done. I know most people are going to say, well, look at what happened to George Floyd. When I look at it, I see t the tale of two different stories. Was the officer right for some of the things they did? Nah. But was he wrong for a lot of things he done? Yeah, especially when the officer asks you to put your hand behind the back. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know people going to say, well, da -da -da, you know, all this other stuff, man. Listen, 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 listen. I'm a black man, and I'm a realist, man. And the way I see some of these things that they make it seem like it was just totally the cop on this and that, some of those cases, man, nah, man. I understand that there are that 1% out there that do the fool. You know what I'm saying? But God will be the judge of that. And he will deal with that. He said, vengeance is his and he shall repay. So at the end of the day, I had no problem with, you know, letting God do his job. But what I do have a problem with is black folks doing the most and trying to play that whole, we were slaves, we were oppressed, you know, we were this and that. Sad. So in this video I'm about to show y'all, which I'm pretty much know that most of y'all already saw it. I seen some crazy but interesting things happen. Man, I just want y'all to watch it with me, man. Tell me what y'all think about this video. You know, you have all of this vast wealth. Those are legitimate concerns. Well, I think you're right about reparations in terms of if people want it, though, what they need to do is you always need to go Preach. back to the beginning of a supply chain. Where was the beginning of the supply chain? That was in Africa. And when that crossed the entire world when the slavery was taking place, which was the first nation in the world that abolished sla uh, slavery? The first nation in the world to abolish it. It was started by William Wilberforce, was the British. In, in Great Britain, says. they abolished slavery. 2,000 naval men died on the high seas trying to stop slavery. Why? Because the African kings were rounding up their own people. They had them on cages waiting in the beaches. No one was running into Africa to get them. And I think you're totally right. If reparations need to be paid, 
We need to go right back to the beginning of that supply chain and say, who was rounding up their own people and having them hang in cages? Absolutely. That's where they should start. And maybe, I don't know, the descendants of those families where they died at the, in the high seas trying to stop the slavery, those families should receive something too, I think, at the same time. It's an interesting discussion, Hillary. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Wow. Some people. Wow. Wow. So all the facts is right there. There it is. We had a black man with a white lady. He had opportunity to go back and cross-examine what she was saying. But he couldn't because she spoke all facts, man. And that's what I'm saying, man. It's facts. There's a lot of facts out there that black people don't want to deal with, man. The fact of the matter is, man, if y'all feel like we owe reparation, not me, because I ain't a part of that. I don't feel like that, man, because first of all, in order for God to forgive me for my sins, I have to forgive. So if I'm asking and demanding white folks to pay me reparations for something that I was not even born um, into or I didn't experience myself, then I would be putting myself somewhere that I wasn't, which would make me a false witness representative because I wasn't there. I can only go by what I heard and what somebody told me, which if I took it to court would be inadmissible because the simple fact it's not factual because I didn't see it. I didn't experience it. You know, that type of thing. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. Black folks want to fight for these crazy things, man. And because of these type of situations and because of what he acts, because of all this stuff going on in our community, man, we are causing problems in the white community, man. Not we, but y'all. Y'all are causing problems in the white community, man. And it's sad. It is sad when people can't stay out of other people's lives in the sense of being a burden to society, man. Like, why would you want to cause problems in other people's community because of your mom or your dad not doing their job? Because of, you know, all of these unwedded babies being born, which, and, you know, me saying kids are being born out of wedlock. You know, kids being born where it's a lot of baby mama, daddy drama going on in the hood. Like, all of these things are the issues. Like, you know what I'm saying? The hip-hop music. You know what I'm saying? Shout out EX Ministries, man. Pastor been preaching for 30-plus years about hip-hop. Went to these black churches. Talked about the truth behind hip-hop. And black people still, in the ignorance, support a lifestyle in the community that teaches and indoctrinates our people as black people. Fill us with this nonsense. We are guys and all this dumb stuff. And then we're trying to figure out why we have the issues in our community that we have. When you go against the God of all gods, the God of the Bible, woe unto you. Woe unto you and the people that chose to do it with you. There's consequences that you have to face and suffer. That's why Africa is poor. Most people don't know why Africa is poor. They're like, well, the white man came and stole. The white man took everything from the African man. Nah, brother. When y'all chose to go after false gods, just like in the Bible, God had a contingency plan. Enslavement of the black people. So if you're mad at anybody, you might be mad at God because he has a lot to do why, with why people get enslaved. Anytime they walked in disobedience, he allowed people to capture them because he had a resolution for people who chose to go against him. But people don't want to talk about that. Why? Because they wanted to be the white man. Instead of looking at the black man who made the decision to do what they do, you know what I'm saying? I want to share another story, man, so y'all can see what is going on, man. And I'm and I and I and I say it again, man. White people, you all right with me? Brown people, you all right with me? No matter who you are, you all right with me? As long as you doing what's right, you all right with me? You doing wrong? You're part of the foolishness? 
Yeah, you ain't all right with me. Hi, my name is Brad Taylor, and I just finished my, Hi, my, Taylor, just finished my freshman man. year at RHS. Um, I've been a part of District 196 schools now for 10 years, and I'm going to give you a glimpse today of what's actually going on inside these schools. Um, despite the board's attempt to deny it, District 196 schools are quickly becoming a place where promoting activism is actually more important than promoting education. I'll take you, I'll take you back to my first day at RHS this fall. The principal came out and gave us a heartfelt speech about equality and standing together. Um, he began to list countless races, such as Latino, Asian, expressing how much they matter and how important they are. But never once did he mention a race or identity that reflects me or half the kids that were in the class. Now, members of the board, I know you haven't been to school in a while. And I know most of the people, I know none of you or most of you don't have any kids left in the school district. Um, but you must admit how uncomfortable it will be to be characterized just by your skin color on the first day of school and be thought that you were wrong just because of your skin color. So-called equity statement by the leader of our school. To be clear, I don't need you to tell me that I matter, but hearing the condolences given to other races and leaving just one race out, it inevitably you'll start to feel like you've done something wrong. And in our wrong. principal's attempt to unify us, he instead created unwarranted boundaries and barriers between his students, pitting us against each other based on characteristics that we can't control. Facts. In another separate instance, I was told that writing all lives matter on the whiteboard was political and could be seen as offensive. When I questioned the teacher after class, she told me that she didn't have an answer and she just had to erase it. And it was quickly erased. There are political signs all over RHS specific about specific races that matter, specific sexual orientations that matter, and specific perspectives that matter. But when I questioned the RHS administration about how these signs were political, they told me that they were supporting human rights. So when I questioned why the equity statement couldn't represent all students, they told me that to even ask that question was outlandish and offensive. And they, when I asked why that was, they told me, quote, whites have a pretty good situation right now, unquote. Crazy. So is, that not so is that not racism? Disregarding my, disregarding my question merely because of the color of my skin. To be, honest, to be honest, after enduring a year of the people in charge telling me that I'm a racist and I'm privileged and pointing out our irreversible differences, I've never noticed race more. And it's becoming the first thing I notice when I meet someone, which has never before been the case. RHS administration confidently told me that RHS students and staff are happy with their equity statement. But from the, my experience in talking with other students, this is not the case. I know many kids who disagree with their teachers, but they're too scared to stand up because they're worried that their grades will be docked and their learning experience will be affected. Some adults too, young blood. My honors government teacher, I'm not going to say his name, but he's mentioned that Democrats care more about all people while Republicans only care about themselves. And he's also inferred to us that socialism is better than democracy. He even had a statue. He had a statue of a socialist leader in his classroom. Um, I have been... I've been told by a lot of kids that they just stay silent and adjust their schoolwork to reflect an acceptable opinion to secure a good grade. I've been approached by multiple teachers who have told me in private that they just want to say that they agree with me and they support me standing up, but they can't say it in front of the class for fear of being disciplined by the administration in some way or losing their jobs. There is clearly only one way to think in this district, and that is that they are teaching their kids to shut up if they don't agree. Now, members of the board, I want you to take a good look at yourselves in the mirror tonight and ask, are you really standing up for the equality of all people, or are you just pushing a damaging political ideology um, on, on our students? A fellow coworker at my job, who, by the way, is of color, discreetly told me that the schools seem to be pushing a very leftist agenda in class. This proves that not everyone is happy with your school, and not everyone who isn't happy is right. Now, due to all these instances I've mentioned and many more that I can't fit in this five-minute speech, I've decided to leave this district and continue school on a private Christian school. Congratulations. And, and there will be sacrifices, and I will not get to walk in the graduation ceremony or attend milestones at RHS, but I will be able to learn in an environment that is not intent on punishing me daily for my skin color and political views. Now, regardless how you take my speech, whether you just shrug it off as malarkey or Fox News talking points, I encourage you to think about it because someday I'm going to be a leader. I may be the yes, president, Lord. a governor, or just a professional golfer, but I will never stop believing that everybody has value no matter their skin color or personal beliefs. 
And it's a shame that you're not going to be able to say that I was an alumni of RHS in District 196. Thank you. Wow. The Bible says out of the mouth of a babe, man. It's crazy that you got Chris, you got some Christians, not all Christians. There are Christians out there fighting. So I'm not going to say Christians to generalize all of us. There's some Christians out there fighting good fight of faith. And I know we don't get caught up in, you know, the political issues and none of that stuff because we're not political people. But to take a stance, man, out of the mouth of a babe, man. If you want to take a stance, man, with me, with Vet Talk, it's time for you parents at home sitting down your children and talking to them about these things, man. I do. I talk to my son about these things. And I always explain to him, just because he's black, he's not at a disadvantage ever. Ever. I, I don't care what the small percentage of black people are talking about. I would never let my son get caught up in that stuff. And what I actually did was I taught him true black history. I taught him the facts that black folks weren't just taken into slavery by white folks by happen chance. Nah, that's just not, it, it didn't happen like that. But, you know, he, he he knows the truth. And I, and I taught him that because again, me growing up where I'm from in South Carolina, a lot of these truths, I'll be honest with you, I didn't grow up knowing it. I thought like the majority, like, you know what I'm saying? And this is a moment of having mercy on all of you black folks out there who are saying all this corrupt stuff. Man, I pray that God would have mercy on you because I grew up like you, man. I grew up thinking some of the white man issues. I grew up feeling some of the ways that y'all felt. And a lot of it had nothing to do with, I would say, me just wanting to be like that. Now nah, it was just the environment that I grew up around, especially being from South Carolina. Like I'm from South Carolina. I'm from Pauley's Island, Georgetown. So when it comes to the black and white issues and the community that I grew up in, you know, it was always us pointing the finger at the white man. But then at the same time I had of man, I can't even count how many friends I grew up with that were murderers, that were robbers, that, you know what I'm saying, were doing a lot of crazy things. The scar got on my head that came from black on black crime, which is another story, you know, because at the end of the day, my dad told me not to go to the skating ring in Georgetown. Everybody from Georgetown know what I'm talking about. You go out there, man, it's going to get rowdy. And you know what I'm saying? Somebody going to put them hands on you because, you know, within the black community, things are broken down by communities. If you ain't from this community, you can't come to that community. So, it was a lot of that stuff. You know, I was from a set called PVP, Plantersville Posse. You know what I'm saying? And it was a game, a neighborhood game. You know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, man, like if you went from where I'm from, you were from Oakland, Dunbar, Lanes Creek, and all these other places, then we were going to see about you, you know, because that's just how it was. And it wasn't the fact that I was really wanting to be a part of that. It was just I was – raised in a situation that I knew nothing about, but because my friend fought, I fought. And here it is, you know what I'm saying? I'm, you know, trying to destroy people who look just like me all because we ain't from the same community. We ain't from the same street. You know what I'm saying? We, we don't have the same last names. We don't have the same family values. You're lighter, I'm darker. You know, all these other little issues that were going on during my time in the community that I'm from. You know what I'm saying? I went to all black school. You know what I'm saying? I can't tell you the number of times I or I witness other people pick on kids because they didn't have on Jordans or because they didn't rock like you rock because he might have been a little bit of whitish or he's a virgin or she's, you know, stuck up. She's a, you know, slut puppy, you know, just different things that went on. Oh, this person don't have this. So they are this and that. Like, you know what I'm saying? It was a lot of different stuff that went on in the community I grew up in. And that had nothing to do with the white man. The white man wasn't there. And the only time he did come around was when we called him because it was too much violence going on that he had to come and mediate and take somebody to jail or break it up and help us as people who should have been able to reason with each other. A mediator had to come and help us reason. So that's, you know, my spell. That's my story. That's vet talk, man. And that's what vet talk is all about, man. I ain't trying to come up on here in front and act like, you know, this and that. And like, nah, I got to be real about this stuff, man. Because we living in sad times, man. 
But the Bible said in the last days that people will be lovers of themselves. So that's the true reason why we see the things that we see. But what I do, and I do, 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 do is I pray for people, man. And I pray that the rest of y'all, everybody who watched this, you pray for people, man. Pray for yourself. Pray that the Lord will keep your mind to help you stay, you know, away from these distractions to get caught up in these foolishness. Because, man, at the end of the day, man, we all got to answer for everything that every word that we speak. That's biblical. Everything you speak and say, you have to answer for. The devil's not going to answer for you. He might have been influenced behind it. There may be spiritual elements that are happening behind it. But death and power lies in your tongue. So whatever you say, like they say in court, will be used and held against you when they read you and remember rights. Remember Randa rights. And when they read that stuff to you, the same thing in the court of heaven, man. You're going to be judged by what you say and what you do. So I pray that you do the right thing. Vet talk out. I'm so glad I got him. I'm so glad I got him.